Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing a super fun, completely die cut card using brand new products from the Simon Says Stamp Cozy Hugs October 2022 release. All of the components have been die cut from white cardstock and colored with my favorite Tim Holtz mica stains. So here I'm just gonna show you really quick the products we're using. I'm gonna be using a label from the Sterling Labels, that's embossing folder and die. We're using some berries from the Berry Stems. We're using the Scalloped Birdhouse. We're going to be using the Layered Songbird. And then we will be using a sentiment from Simple Holiday Greetings. So lots of new products here that really go together well. Off camera, as I mentioned, I did die cut my components so that I would be able to quickly be color and put everything together. We are going to start with a clear plastic box that I use as a splatter box because it can be rinsed out and reused over and over and over again. This is a shallow storage type box from like Walmart, some sort of discount store. I'm sure mine's from Walmart. Um, you, they have lids, but I'm not using the lid, of course. But I like the shallow one. It's fantastic. It holds the spray. I am able to then rinse it out, and I reuse this over and over again, and it never looks gross and dingy, so it's awesome. I am shaking up the Cocktail Party Distress Mica Stain. This is one of the new holiday colors for 2022. I am going to stick to all 2022 colors for my video today with the exception of one color that's a 2021 color. And that's just simply because I wanted a brown color and that's what I wanted, I guess. Um, I love these. These mica stains are absolutely my favorite. Now, I did make sure and shake it up until you can hear the ball shaking in the container. So you're gonna see a lot of shaking here. You want to get those mica flakes shook up in the spray bottle before you spray it so they don't clog the nozzle. Trust me, I clogged one last year and I'm not able to use that spray nozzle for that bottle. Then I am going to take another color. This is Tart Cranberry, which I love. And we're going to use Tart Cran... So I guess the, the base of the house is our pink cocktail party. The roof, uh, the circle opening of the birdhouse and the base of the birdhouse are going to be Tart Cranberry. Plus, you can see that I very lightly... Um, pushed down on the trigger and splattered my pink birdhouse. So it has some droplets of red in it, which is one of my favorite things to do. For some of the greenery, we're gonna use Merry Mint. Oh my gosh, you guys, Merry Mint with Cocktail Party is so beautiful. Really uh, kind of bright modern-y, I love it. Or vintage, I guess, if you wanna go the shiny bright route. Now, you don't have to just use holiday colors. I am gonna be using the Wicked Elixir from the um, Halloween Distress Mica Stains from this year's release, the 2022 release. And I am going to be inking these two um, branches over here in the top right corner with the Wicked Elixir. And this is a really great green. I love this, again, with the pink and the um, aqua, it looks great. And then I even took it, and you can see I splattered some green on those Merry Mint leaves. I like a little splatter on mine. Um, we're grunging it up a little bit, but it's still gonna be very bright and modern-y. Now, this is the color that I was talking about that I am using a 20, or the pardon me, the die cut, that I'm gonna use the 2021 color on. And I just simply moved a few things out of my splatter box to dry on my desk. This is Crooked Broomstick. And Crooked Broomstick is a really great brown, and for me, I just felt like this little twiggy branch needed a really good brown, and so I did pull a 2021 color. You could use your regular Distress uh, sprays, or Distress Oxide sprays if you don't have a brown. Or even just your inks and ink it up. 
Over my green branches, I did take some fresh balsam and I splattered the brighter green, the green, the uh, Wicked Elixir with some fresh balsam. The base of my bird, this is Iron Gate. Such a pretty color. Um, I love this gray, fantastic basic. And then we are going to take one of my favorite Halloween Distress Spray colors for this year for the wing and then another little accent piece for the bird. And we are going to use Burning Ember. I love Burning Ember. So after I spritz and spray and color these two little pieces, I am also going to do the same thing I've done before and I'm going to add just a little splatter to my bird, but you can see how I did it kind of far out so it gets a very tiny misting of splatter. For the top portion of the bird's head, I did go back to Crooked Broomstick, so it does make another little appearance here. And again, that's the 2021 color. And then the beak for my bird is my other favorite Halloween color for this year, Harvest Moon. It is an awesome yellow. I love this color. And so you can see with just a few Distress Mica Stain colors, I am able to get lots of things colored. Now I almost forgot to do the berries, so we are gonna go back to Tart Cranberry for those. I am putting all my little berries in my box. It was a little time consuming because they're so teeny tiny and a bunch of them popped out, but we're gonna get them all put in the box and we will get them sprayed. I don't want any overspray on any of the bird pieces, so I will be taking tweezers and lifting them out of the box and placing them on my work surface to completely dry. My preferred method of drying for anything with the Distress Mica stains and pretty much anything in general is to let it air dry. And I did end up letting mine air dry for probably about an hour. I did notice when I came back into my room after a little break, letting everything dry, that I had forgot to color a few pieces. So there are going to be a few additional things that will require some spray. I say color. We're doing the most easy way of coloring I feel like there is, which is just spraying the color right on, but I forgot to add color to those, so I will need to do that as well. Once I've moved any of the bird pieces out of the box, I did go ahead with my tart cranberry and just ink up my little berries, and then I do think they dry much better if you take them out of the box and set them somewhere else to dry. I should also mention I am using the Tim Holtz glass mat today because it just cleans up super easily. I know there is a terrible glare, so often I try not to use it in the videos, but today I needed that quick cleanup. I thought I was going to leave the scallop for the birdhouse white, and I'm noticing I don't love that. So I'm going to go ahead, um, I forgot to do the accent for around the birdhouse, so we're going to do tart cranberry. And then I do have this cute label, and that is what we're going to use for our greeting today. And this is the Sterling labels, and I love them. And I think I need to add some color to that as well. And because there's not a lot of white on my card, I realized that the scallop isn't going to look great in white. So I'm actually going to go back to the Wicked Elixir for that bright green, and I love the bright green with the red and pink of the house. Everything on here is going to have a bit of shimmer and shine to it because we are using the uh, mica stains for it. If you want to kind of get the most also out of the splatter in your box, you could always take like some die cut tags and press them into these splatters or just even panels of cardstock. And I think that would be a fun way to kind of use up some of that extra ink. On a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of smooth white cardstock, I am spritzing Winter Frost Distress Mica Stain, and that is the last color we're using today. I used 10 colors in all, and look at that beautiful background. Now, once it's completely dry, I'm gonna use the new stencil from Simon Says Stamp that has the snow and some 
opaque white Tim Holtz grit paste and we are going to apply the grit paste over our background panel. I purposely didn't cover the entire panel with blue as I wanted a little bit of the white from the cardstock to show through it to look like that snowy sky. And then I'm going to put a nice thin layer of snow all over this background and let it sit and completely air dry. This dries very, very quickly, and you want to go clean your stencil and your palette knife immediately, and look how pretty that is. It's gonna be the perfect backdrop for our birdhouse. Now that I have all of my components, it's time to put it together. I am gonna glue the birdhouse together first, and you can really see some of that darker tart cranberry splatter in the cocktail party, which I love. I'm gonna layer the scallop on first and then the red roof piece. And I'll be using acrylic blocks from my stash throughout to help hold everything nice and flat. We also have the little frame opening for our birdhouse. And we're gonna to put together our bird. I was a little worried how well this would work coloring in something like the bird and it ended up being fantastic. I absolutely love it. Now the eye does die cut out. Mine's stuck in the die cut and I left it there and I'm kind of just gluing it down and gluing it in place and I will make the eye pop by using a black pearl gemstone to add detail to the eye. You could also use Nouveau Crystal Drops or you could even die cut the eye from black cardstock if you wanted to. Get the face pieces lined up where they're supposed to go. I've got my last little piece and then we're gonna add the wing and our bird will be completely assembled. And again, I'll put an acrylic block on top to help hold this down and hold it flat while that glue dries. For the branches, I'm gonna take little dabs of glue and place them all over the berries and I'm just gonna start replacing the berries. There's the large and the small. And I love the layering of this. I think it's gonna really add a fun touch to our greenery tucked around our birdhouse. I'm using an embellishment wand to easily pick up all of these little cir circle berries and pop them in place. Now, I did step away from this for a little bit and came back and I had forgotten. I thought, oh, it didn't die cut enough berries. I'm gonna have to die cut more. And luckily I looked at my desk and I was like, oh no, there's the rest of the berries. They're still stuck in the cardstock piece. I don't need to go die cut anymore. It die cuts exactly the number you need. I was really thinking about it there for a minute. I was like, wow, how did I miscount so badly? <laughs> Completely forgot. Now for my card, because the scene is kind of big and bold, I felt like the top of the birdhouse was a great place for a greeting. And this awesome sterling label, I mean, it looks like a book plate label. You die cut the label and what I found worked best, you die cut the label and then you run it through the embossing folder. There's lots of different options and it gives you that texture that looks like a book label. And with the mica stain, it really looks like a book label. I love it. I am going to back my birdhouse with some of my favorite new Simon Says Stamp foam adhesive. This stuff is awesome. And then we are going to pop our birdhouse right on our background. 
We're gonna do the birdhouse first and then the base of the birdhouse. I'm going to cut a thinner strip of foam adhesive from this roll, place it on the back of the strip and then pop it in place underneath. One of the things I love so much about this foam adhesive from Simon Says Stamp is how easily the backing paper comes off. I know that seems like such a small thing, but a lot of backing paper really sticks to the foam tape and can kind of be a pill to get off, and this comes right off. So I've got this thin piece of foam adhesive, as I just mentioned, I'm gonna cut it in half, and then I'll place one of those halves on that little strip for the base of the birdhouse, and then we're going to just um, kind of carefully slide that right in place, and that grounds it so nicely. Next, we wanna take our greenery pieces and our bird and kind of figure out where we want them all to go and start gluing them down in place. I don't wanna trim off very much, if any, of the bird, so I make sure and move the bird over far enough that the tail doesn't hang off the side of the card, or at least not by much. Then I'm gonna put my berry, the larger berry branch, the larger little mint colored leaves, and a little twig or branch, and then we're gonna glue our bird in place. Oh, actually we wanna add our other little minty green leaf and our other small little red berry branch. And I need to make sure that I've left room for my little book plate so that I can add a sentiment inside of here. After I've maneuvered all of the greenery the way I want it to go, I can glue my bird down. At this point, I do recommend putting something heavy on top if you're using liquid glue so that it holds everything down and everything is nice and secure while that glue is drying. For the inside birdhouse piece, I did spray that with some of the, oh, what is it called? Iron color, and I'm probably going to pick it very last to tell you what color it is. Iron Gate. And then for the inside of the book label, I went back to our Merry Mint. On the inside of the label, I used Stays On Ink to stamp Christmas blessings from our Simple Holiday Greetings stamp set. And then I want to glue these right to the top of the birdhouse. I just feel like it kind of looks like the, the birdhouse, like, on a regular house where the house might have the street number on it, uh, or the house number, pardon me, on it. Um, for me, this, it's like the birdhouse's little, you know, house plaque or whatever, I guess. And I think, it, I just can't get over how great the iron gate looks on the book plate. It makes it look like a metal book plate. I think that would be great even if you weren't using any mica stains anywhere else on a card. Now, I purposely didn't add too much glue to that branch. That way I'm able to maneuver it so it's not covering up my greeting. And then I'm putting acrylic blocks on top after I've added some glue so I can hold it down where I want it to go. We're gonna start embellishing my favorite part. We're gonna add the black eye with a black pearl gem. I'm gonna add the inside of the birdhouse. Just like that. And then we're going to add some little pearls to our house, some little hearts, and what snowy holiday scene isn't complete without a little bit of glitz, glimmer, and snow. So I'm gonna take some liquid glue. I have to tell you, I actually meant to use glossy accents. It was sitting out of the frame of the camera here, and I accidentally picked up the barely glue, and luckily it worked. 
and I am sprinkling on some chunky glitter from Lawn Fawn. Any kind of glitter will do here. I wanted something kind of a little bolder and I'm adding just little touches of it to the berries and to the leaves and then I'll add some to the roof of our birdhouse and it's going to give just a glittery icy kind of feel like iced berries and um, like you would get for decoration and thing like things like that. I love it. I can't believe though that I didn't notice I was using the wrong glue, which is funny. It's probably not wrong, wrong. It's just not what I had in intended. Adding in the rest of our sparkle. Oh my goodness, it is so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna clean up this mess real quick. I know that Tim tells us that glitter is an outdoor activity and I keep forgetting it's an outdoor activity. So I have to go grab my dust buster and I will be right back. I decided to go every other scallop border and add some little white pearls to the scallops. I didn't really want to do little pearls on every single scallop. First of all, that would be a lot of pearls. Second of all, some of them are covered up with our greenery and things. And so I thought it would look kind of funny and a little over the top. So I'm just going every other row. And I think it's the perfect amount of decoration for the outside of this glitzy, glamorous birdhouse. And most of my pearls are on the right side of the card. I did put, I think, maybe just one over on the left. Most of the left side of the house is covered up. But I do think that one little pearl does kind of help just show that pretend, envision, that's what I should say, envision that there are more pearls. We're going to add some little white heart accents to here kind of coming up from our birdie and one up in the very tippy top of our house. We're going to attach this panel to a white top fold card base. And that is it, my friends. Super fast, quote unquote, coloring with mica stains. They are absolutely amazing. They are only seasonal. So grab yours from Simon Says Stamp right now. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. The products I've shown today are from the Simon Says Stamp Cozy Hugs October 2022 release. Please be sure to come back tomorrow for even more inspiration using this amazing line of products. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my incredible Patreon members. If you'd like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to see you over there as part of our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.